Hello and welcome to EucreMedia.com. My name is Sergey Proknevsky and today I have 25 useful tricks in After Effects you may not know about. Now this is a part three, which means part one and two are out there. You can check them out on EucreMedia.com or I'll be sure to post links under this uh, tutorial, so uh, in the description of this tutorial. But in the meantime, let's dive right in. Number one is Edit Original and this one is amazing. Let's say you have a video clip of, that came from some kind of After Effects project. In other words, it was rendered out of After Effects. And let's say you need to find a project file, uh, After Effects project file for this clip, but then there's nobody around and you need to have it right away. What's the quickest way to find the project file uh, without going through all the folders and stuff? And this one is amazing. So all you have to do is just select this clip and drag it into your After Effects. And once you're in After Effects, all you have to do is just make sure it's selected and just go to edit and then edit original right here. And I don't want to save this project, so don't save. And it will bring up the After Effects project that it was created in. Number two is solo properties. And this one is amazing. So let's say uh, you have all these properties in, in your timeline, but you only want to focus on select few, let's say. So how would I only solo them and hide the rest of these properties? So for, for example, I want to solo direction and feather. So to do that, all I have to do is just select direction and then control, uh, hold down control my keyboard and then click on feather. So I only select the two, but you can select as many as you want. So, and next, all you have to do is just hit S on your keyboard twice quickly. And there you have it. Number three is hide properties. And this one is essentially the exact same thing as solo properties, but in this case, instead of soloing, you just hide properties. So let me show you what I mean. All you have to do is just hit down Alt Shift, hold it down on your keyboard, and then click on any properties and it will hide it. And the same thing goes for these groups as well. So you can kind of clean up uh, your timeline. Number four is remember and apply interpretation. Now this one's kind of a boring one, but it's uh, very useful. So let me show you how this works. Let's say you have some footage that you brought in and uh, I have some here. So, but some of them, let's say a certain rate, 29.97, uh, but you want them to be, all of them to be 24 frames. So how do I ch you change one and apply it to all the other ones uh, so you don't have to go to individually interpret them. So let's say I'm gonna go into this one, right click, uh, interpret footage in main, or you can do control alt G and interpret this one, let's say 24, oops. 24 frames like this, hit OK. So what if I want to copy this, uh, these settings and then apply it to all the other ones? How do I do that? You can do right click and uh, interpret footage and then you can do remember interpretation, click here, or you can do control alt C to copy it and then control alt uh, V to paste. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do control alt C and then select all the other footage and then control alt V to paste. So now you can tell that these are 24 frames as well. Number five is save frame as Photoshop layers. Let's say a producer comes in into your office and says, hey, love the design you did in After Effects. How or can you uh, convert that design into Photoshop with all the layers and everything? How do you do it? The, the answer is really easy. So all you have to do is just go to composition here and save frame as Photoshop layers and then direct it to where you want it to be saved. Hit save and then just double click on the file you just saved. And there you have it. Everything, as you can see, everything is movable. Everything has its own layers, so it's really great. Number six is convert Photoshop text to editable text in After Effects. And this is what I mean. Here's a Photoshop text file that I created in Photoshop. In other words, it is editable in Photoshop. It's not an image, but it is an image here. In other words, it's not an editable text. So if I double click, it's just an image. So how do I convert this Photoshop uh, text into editable text in After Effects? So all you have to do is just right click on it and go to convert to editable text. And now if you double click on it, you can change anything you would like. Number seven is convert shape layer to Bezier path. So for this one, I'm just gonna use one of these shape tools. Uh, I'm just gonna do polygon tool and I will create me a polygon, something like this maybe. And I'm just gonna center it. So and inside here, I can always uh, you know, adjust some properties here, more points. But what if I want to change point, like certain points uh, individually? How would I do that? Obviously, I can't do that right now. 
So all you have to do is just right click on uh, right here and then you convert to Bezier path and it basically collapses everything down. So now you don't have all the options, but you can uh, select any of these, oops, any of these points and move them around individually. Number eight is show all properties. And this one is quite simple. So let's say I want to see all of the properties of this layer. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to really do this. Uh, it would just take me forever. So all you have to do is just select uh, or hold down control on your keyboard and then click on this thing right there and it will collapse every single one of them. And if you do again, it will put it back together. But let's say the same thing applies for um, other things as well. So let's say if you want to just see all the contents. So if you do hold control and click on that, it will just show you the contents. So here you go. Number nine is set a number comp marker. So normally if to create a comp marker, all you have to do is just uh, hit asterisks on your keyboard and it will create one for you. And if you want to put stuff in there, like you know number or something, you would have to right click and go to settings or just double click on it. And you put one, hit okay, but that's way too many steps. But uh, now with a quick shortcut, all you have to do is just uh, hold down shift on your keyboard and then just use the number. So like shift one, will give you uh, one and shift two, shift three and shift four and so on. What's cool about that also is that if you reuse the number again, let's say if I'm going to do shift two to use two and I already have it, it automatically replaces that two and puts it over here. So this is really neat. Number 10 is remove marker. And uh, let's say we created all the markers. What's the quickest way to remove them? All you have to do is hold control down on your keyboard and just hover over each marker and just click on it and it will automatically uh, erase one individually. Number 11 is adjusting comp duration when pre-comping. So here's the thing. Let's say I have this layer and I'm going to uh, play with it a little bit just to trim it some. And if I want to pre-comp, I'll do control shift C. And then uh, now with, with the new Creative Cloud, you can select this option, which is adjust composition duration to the time span of the selected layers. So if you have it selected, when you hit OK, it will pre-comp it and it basically it will have the, the in and out will be exactly same uh, as your layer. Or in this case, it can be it can be also layer. So let's say like create another one. So let's do this. two of them selected. Control Shift C, have that selected, and then both layers, the in and out, is the exact same as as it is here. This is a big deal because before, uh, if you do control, uh, you know, basically if you group it or pre-comp it, uh, if you don't select this, this is what it was like before. And it would just give you in and out compare uh, according to your composition here. And when you go into this, there'd be all this extra space, which is really annoying. So so now it's really awesome. Just select these two, control shift C, select this box, and then there you have it. Number 12 is add new layer. And it's really uh, a new little feature in After Effects. So when you bring in any kind of so, like a new text, solid light, camera, all this stuff. When you bring it in, before when you, you would do it, it strictly put it on top of your composition here. Uh, but now if you select a layer and do control uh, or new solid or something like that, it would bring in right above uh, the selected layer. So if you select this and do control uh, shift alt Y, it'll bring in a null right above that. Number 13 is display expressions only. And this one is quite simple. If you, let's say, are in your timeline and you want to only see expressions, no keyframes, none of that stuff, just expressions. All you have to do is just hit E twice on your keyboard. And there you have it. Number 14 is copy expression only. And this one's quite simple. Let's say if I want to copy the expression from this position um, layer into this position layer. Uh, normally, I would just select it and do Control C and then Control V. But not only do I copy the expression, but I also gain these keyframes I don't really want. Uh, so how do I only copy the expression only without carrying over the expressions or the keyframes? So all you have to do is just select the position here and right click and then go to Copy Expression Only. And then select uh, your position that you want the expression go into and just do Control V. And it's right there. Number 15 is pick whip to different comp. So here's my little setup. Let's say I have a null here and let's say I want to uh, go into this comp and link up the rotation of this Euchre Media text into the uh, rotation of this null. So how would I do that? 
So first, uh, the quickest way to do it is just if you select this and just drag it out of it, uh, like dock it in here somewhere. So we have it side by side. And then all you would do really is just alt click on you Media text and say, okay, the, the rotation of this property, you're gonna go out of this comp into this null rotation property. And that's what's gonna be controlling that. So now if we cancel this, uh, if we just rotate the null, the text, which is in another comp, is rotating as well. Number 16 is reversing parent value. And I'm not sure if that's the right name, but this is what we're gonna do. Basically, first we're going to uh, alt click over here and parent the rotation value of the text to the rotation of the null. And so now the null controls the rotation. But uh, what if, let's say, I want, because right now the, the null and the, the text, they rotate in the same direction. So, but what if I want for the text to rotate in the opposite direction, uh, how would I do that? So all you have to do is just add a little math to the end of this expression. Just do multiply by negative one, which will reverse this expression. So now when you rotate, the null goes one way and the text goes the other. Number 17 is delete footage without warning. And this one is a, is a simple one really. Uh, but if you ever want to erase something like a comp or a footage that's in other compositions, uh, it will give you this. If you hit delete, it will give you this warning. But if you ever want to erase something without that warning, because sometimes if you're erasing a bunch of stuff and that warning pops up, it can be annoying. So all you have to do is select the footage and do control backspace and it will get rid of it. Number 18 is scroll selected layer to the top of the timeline panel. And here's a thing. So sometimes you have a bunch of layers in your timeline. And what if you just want to, let's say, focus on this one and you want to be right here at the top? Uh, the quickest way to do it, just hit X on your keyboard and it will do that. So it's kind of cool because even this layer or like this layer, uh, you can't really go any further than that. But if you hit X, it will bring it right there. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of space. So sometimes it's really neat to have. Number 19 is preserve frame rate. And for this, I changed the frame rate of this composition to 10 frames per second. In fact, let's make it more obvious. Let's do like six. So, so here's the thing. Let's say I animate this logo, the position of it, let's say from one side to another, uh, like so maybe. And if you hit, you know, play, you can tell that it's very snappy kind of jittery animation. So because obviously it's six frames per second. But if I pre-comp this logo and just move it into a new composition and then change the frame rate of this composition to let's say 2997, now if I hit play, it's smooth. So in other words, it doesn't recognize the frame rate of the last uh, composition. So it doesn't preserve the frame rate. So how would I preserve, let's say I want that look for this comp, even though it's 60 or 29.97 frame rate. Uh, so what you need to do is basically go back to this composition here and do and go into the comp settings and then just make sure in advanced here, make sure the preserve frame rate when nested is selected. And then if you go back and play, it's giving you that effect that you want. Number 20 is select and deselect all visible keyframes in your timeline. So here's the thing. I'm going to basically bring like anchor point, uh, position, rotation, scale, opacity. Uh, and I'm going to set random keyframes just somewhere, just randomly. This is sh just to show you what, what I'm trying to say here. So usually if you have these keyframes selected, how would you select them without using a mouse? Uh, you can try control A, but it only selects the layers. But how would you select the uh, keyframes and the properties here? So what you would do is just do control alt A to select them and then control alt shift A to de deselect. So it's kind of cool because if I select rotation, let's say, and uh, scale and do control alt A and then do U to reveal all of them, you can tell that it only selected the ones that were visible. So that it is uh, important to point out that it only selects the keyframes that are visible. 21 is moving content into a new folder. And uh, for this, I'll use footage here. So let's say, um, what if I wanna move like this, that footage and this one into a new folder? How would, I, how would I do it? I mean, normally I guess you can select this folder and then open a new, label it and then select the, you know, select the, the content you want. That's too many steps. Uh, there's a, a quicker way. So once you select your footage, all you have to do is just click and drag them into a folder and it will automatically put it inside a folder and you just uh, label this whatever you want. 
22 is resize application window to fit screen. And this one's just a simple shortcut. All you have to do is just do control uh, backslash on your keyboard and it will resize your After Effects uh, to your screen, which will give you more space to work in. 23 is center comp in the panel. And this is basically for everyone that's OCD. Let's say uh, if you moved your, I don't know, screen around like this and now you wanna center this and it drives you nuts. All you have to do is just double click on this hand and it will give you the exact center. 24 is look at all selected layers. And for this one, I, I will turn my logo here into a 3D layer and I'll also bring in a new camera into my scene. And uh, next, I'll just duplicate my logo a few times and just place them in random places here in my composition. And so the way this works, by the way, you have to make sure that your layers are 3D and that you do have a camera in the scene in order for this to work. So the way it works, uh, once you have this set up, you just select a layer and tell, uh, go to view here and just say, look at selected layers. And the camera will come over here and actually look at the layer you selected. It'll center it in its view like so, and which is cool because now you can actually animate this. Uh, you can set some keyframes here and then maybe go 20 frames and maybe tell in 20 frames, tell to look at this object and just do control alt shift backslash. That's the key uh, keyboard shortcut, just so you know, and uh, maybe frame it a little bit differently and maybe here as well. And you can already see that it's animating between the two points. Um, and then maybe you can go 10 frames forward and then tell, um, like go to view here and tell for the camera to look at all layers and then it can see everything like this and maybe make it all easy ease. And as you can see, just a quick way to animate uh, something. I took no time, but yeah, definitely useful, especially if you struggle with camera animation. All right, and the last one is parenting to new layer. And this one is really awesome. So let's say I have like some layers here, some are parented to each other and stuff. So it's kind of uh, complicated, but it's still small. Can you imagine having like lots of layers and, and still parented to each other? And what if let's say you want to bring in a new null and then parent, you know, all of them, um, I don't know, let's see, to this null, the ones that's not parented. So when you move this null around, everything except maybe the background moves with the null. Uh, but what if, let's say, after you already created this, you you wanted to bring, let's say, a new null and the pivot point to be here. Uh, I mean, if you have a bunch of layers, last thing you want to do is uncheck all this other and reparent. It just takes too much work. Uh, but here's the quick way to do this. So what you do is basically this null, the old one, you just parent it to the new one, new pivot point, uh, and just delete it, delete the old one, and it automatically will uh, parent all the other ones that were parented to this one, uh, it will automatically redirect it to that. So I hope that made sense. It's a really cool technique, uh, very useful. All right, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please share this video, like it, a comment I love hearing from you guys if you haven't seen part one or two yet be sure to give those a go and please like me on Facebook follow me on Twitter and that's it